Off on another adventure, are we? Levioso! This looks intriguing. Assignment's all finished. Revelio! Levioso! Abandoned long ago, no doubt. Revelio. Perhaps it's dinner I'm hearing. Rebellion. Time. No amount of spoils is worth that many spiders. Incendio. That wasn't so difficult. We got your Leviosa. Whoa. 
Revelio. Merlin trials won't get the best of me. Revelio. I should investigate. Levioso! Everything's all... Revelio! Levioso! <laughs> Sometimes it seems all roads lead to Hogsmeade. Come in! 
Sorry if there's a smell. New batch of toad hide. I don't mind selling things for certain clients. You know where to find me. I'll not mind seeing you here again. Consider yourself welcome. I wonder who lives here. This could prove dangerous if I'm not careful. Revelio. Levioso. There, there. I'm not going to hurt you.
Excellent work today. Class dismissed. Ugh. Can't say I'm terribly fond of all the dung in this class. I take it you're ready to... I completed your assignment, Professor. I'm ready to learn Bombarda now. Good. Now, this spell comes with a caveat. It should only be used when necessary. The exploding charm, as you might suspect, can hurt people. Use caution when casting it. I will, Professor. I will hold you to that promise. Now, you must be precise in your wand movements. We don't want you blowing your hand off. Go ahead. Nice and steady wand movements. Remember, the exploding charm is highly volatile. Well done. Now, let us put it into practice, shall we? Go ahead and try it on the pumpkin. Bombarda. Excellent wand work. Cast the spell just like that every time. Assured and in control. Professor, might I have a moment? Yes. What is it? I was wondering what inspired your interest in magical beasts. Are you considering some sort of profession in the field? I haven't decided quite yet, but I do find magical beasts fascinating. Hmm. You do seem to engage well with the beasts in class. I believe that when choosing a path, particularly of a scholarly nature, one must take into account both one's enthusiasm for a particular subject, as well as how one may best serve the students to whom one is obligated to both inspire and teach. Of course, Professor. When did your path become clear? I recall it quite vividly. It was the summer between my sixth and seventh years. I read in the Prophet about a wizard who'd been selling Ockamy eggs and disappeared in the mountains near my home. I knew of the Ockamy, of course, from my studies, but they are native to lands east of here, such as India. I wondered if it was possible that an Ockamy could be so nearby. Hence, I went to find it. Seems quite a challenge finding an Ockamy in the mountains. It was. After a few days, during which my parents grew increasingly annoyed at my absence, I found what little remained of the wizard egg trader. He was near a tree hollow. And there, inside, was a nest with seven silver Ockamy eggs. What did you do with them? Nothing. Beasts are to be valued for what they can provide for wizard kind. Protective clothing potion ingredients, even one cause. Only poachers see the value in ending a beast's life for galleons. I left the eggs alone. I hid, and moments later, the beast flew right over my head, breathtaking. She then seemed to all but disappear as she shrunk to fit into the hollow. That sounds incredible. Indeed. I knew in that moment that I needed to understand all that I could about beasts and ensure that wizard kind learned to benefit properly from them. Now, I trust that I have answered your question. You would do well to continue your study of beasts, regardless of your chosen path. Beasts and all that they provide will vastly improve your life and perhaps one day even save it. I shall remember that, Professor. Thank you.
Hello, Samantha. Are you here for someone as court? I am. I'm actually rather good at it. Used to play all the time with my brother until. Oh, never mind. Shall we begin? Yes, I'm ready to play. Then let's get summoning. Akia! That was sensational. Akia. Oh my, that settles it then. <laughs> After your poor show against Natty in class, I thought I could beat you. It appears I overestimated myself. Don't say that, Samantha. You're a fine player. Well, that's very kind of you. Let's just say if I'm good, then you're better. I happen to know who you're up against next, and she's no shy opponent. Best of luck. gloves went mysteriously missing. When I fell off my broom and broke six bones, Forget what that 
You'll never believe what I've... What did you discover in the spellbook we found in the scriptorium? Salazar Slytherin's spellbook was a little difficult to interpret, but fascinating. Evidently, he encouraged teaching dark magic at Hogwarts. Neither the Imperious Curse nor the Killing Curse was unforgivable during his time. He believed students should be prepared to use dark magic when necessary, not to fear it. That's why we had to use Crucio to gain access to the Scriptorium. He didn't want his knowledge shared with anyone who was afraid of the power of dark magic. It was hard to do, but casting Crucio was our only option. And I'm glad we did it, because in the spellbook I also found something else. References to a lost relic, which, from what I can tell, grants the holder the power to reverse dark magic curses. And you think this relic might be able to save Anne? Precisely. I plan to search for this relic, but I don't think we should tell anyone. Especially Ominous. He wouldn't understand. I see no reason to involve Ominous. I'm glad you agree. When I know more, I shall send an owl. And don't feel sorry for Ominous. Keeping this to ourselves for now is for his own good. I'll decide what's for my own good. Ominous, we were just about to get some air. Care to join? You're a liar, Sebastian. I heard everything. You swore you'd never engage in anything to do with dark magic again. No, I didn't. I said I understood you wanting that. I'd never swear to give up on finding a cure for Anne. You don't know when to stop, do you? I know when not to stop. Leave this alone, Ominous. I'll be on my way. I am not letting this go. Ominous, Sebastian meant well. I know what I heard. You knew I wouldn't agree with this. Going after that relic is not a good idea. Sebastian doesn't even realize it, but he's as irresponsible and reckless now as his parents were years ago. It's why they died. I knew his parents died, but I never heard what happened. Mr. and Mrs. Sallow were professors, spent nearly every waking moment in the cellar library, noses buried in books. Anne and Sebastian were upstairs when it happened. They heard a sudden crash and ran downstairs, but it was too late. Their parents had crumpled to the floor. A defect with the lamp in the cellar caused the room to fill with an undetectable toxin. Sebastian and Anne were helpless. They had no magic yet. What a horrible story. It is. That's why I can't understand Sebastian's recklessness. I've practically lost Anne. I cannot lose Sebastian too. Please avoid anything to do with that spellbook. Those references in the book seem promising. Everything to do with Salazar Slytherin seems promising until it's too late. I hope Sebastian pursues this no further, but if you think he might, please let me know. It would mean a lot. I should let Deke know about the newborn Thestral.
Hello, Deke. You'll be pleased to know that a little Thestral was born. How wonderful to have more Thestrals in our world. Such misunderstood beasts. I'm sorry that we can both see Thestrals, Deke. Deke is privileged to see such majestic beasts, but sometimes wishes Deke couldn't. Deke is to blame. What do you mean, to blame? Years ago, Deke's master ordered Deke to help him capture a phoenix, the rarest of all beasts that master had spotted high on a cliff. The phoenix was the most beautiful beast Deke had ever seen. Deke begged master to leave her be. When Deke hesitated to climb up the cliff as ordered, Deke had to punish himself. As Deke punished himself, Master grew angrier and angrier, and in his frustration, cast at the regal bird. Deke suspects the phoenix was protecting eggs when it swooped down in fear and fury. Before Deke could reach him, Master fell from the cliff. Deke stayed on that cliffside for days, punishing himself, before Tobbs found him. What a horrible tale, Deke. I'm so sorry. Deke has only told Professor Weasley that story, and now yourself. Deke often wonders what became of that phoenix. Deke feels fortunate to be at Hogwarts now, helping you rescue beasts. Perhaps Deke can make amends for what came before. I'd like to ask you about changing the room's ambience. Of course. Uh, what sort of overall look most appeals to you? I'd like the room to be warm and comfortable, as if I'm floating inside a mug of butterbeer. Oh, sounds perfect. of all the potions you've brewed. Hogsmeade, here I come. Hasn't been anyone as bad as Barnes. By myself scurrying home at night. Pardon me? My Hello. Dad? Is there something I can help you with? How do you do? I'm Sacharissa Tugwood, and I have an exciting business proposition for you. Now, it may surprise you to learn that someone of my obvious esteemed lineage would be in business. But I only want to help the less fortunate. That's incredibly nice of you. Oh, there's more. You see, I've been experimenting with a new beauty cream. A cream that will rid our glorious school of the hideous, greasy pustules plaguing our poor pubescent classmates. But I've run out of the key ingredient, boobatuba pus. Boobatubas do grow in the forbidden forest, however. If only I could pay someone to collect a few for me. What precisely are boobatubas? Disgusting things, really. Covered in protrusions. One needs to squeeze them to collect the pus. They smell simply awful and seem to move on their own. Ugh, I wouldn't go near the things if it weren't for my devotion to my classmates. I can try and find some for you if I have the time. Marvellous. I'd go myself, but I don't want to. I only need a few boobatubas, but they grow wild, so you'll have to look around. Our spotty classmates are counting on you, so you mustn't tell...
Off on another adventure, are we? <laughs> I found a Dirichol den near the Hamlets. Made some galleons off that little find. I didn't always like a polite battle. This is where Sakurissa said to go. Now where are those but with just my luck? Troll. Smells awful. Only four more, thank goodness. Rebellion. To do it. I'd better get back to Sakurissa now. Bombarda. Rebellion. Bombarda. Not so tricky after all, Merlin. than Hogsmeade. Accio! <laughs> 
Sakarissa, I found the boo tube as you needed. Splendid. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. May I have them? Of course. Happy to have found them for you. Thank you. And your payment, of course. Now I can begin perfecting my potion to save our poor pimply peers. Don't know who should be more grateful, I or our unsightly spotty classmates. One day the Wizarding World will know my name, and you will have been a small part of it. Nothing warms a body like you. What are you up to now? Revelio. I do hope Mary and I know... Excuse me, sir. Are you all right? Just barely. But I don't want to trouble a student with my woes. I am indeed a student, but I could very well be able to help you. I'm not so sure. Name's Crispin Dunn, by the way. I trade in the surrounding hamlets. Do the most business in Aronshire. A lovely little hamlet. Just stunning gardens. Just the other day, the Daily Prophet ran an article on its scenic hedgerows. Actually, before I go on, I should ask... Are you afraid of spiders? Spiders don't bother me at all. You'd be impressed by how many I've dispatched lately. Lucky you. The hamlet's overrun with the vile things, and they're acting abnormally aggressively. I'm concerned about my customers, of course, but it appears that most of the hamlet's residents fled to safety. It's my friend Mary I worry about. I haven't heard from her, and I fear she's trapped in her cottage. Understandable. But why don't you check on her yourself? I would, but I have a crippling fear of the eight-legged beasts, which I, unlike you, seem incapable of conquering. I don't know what to do. Can you think of anyone who can help Mary? I'll try my very best, Mr. Dunn. Please do. If you can think of anyone that may be brave enough to help, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. 
They'll find Aaron just southeast of Hogsmeade, just below the train station. Revelio. This must be Aronshire. Let's keep an eye out for spiders. Revelio. Bombarda. Revelio. Even more aggressive than I'd expected. Protego. Stupid one. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Fringo. Revelio. Repairo. Alohomora. What do we have here? Oh no, this must be Mary. Poor woman. Mary was breeding these things in her cellar. That means there are more underground. I'll need to destroy every last spider in that cellar if this is to end. Mine now, Demi guys. Revelio.
Repair her. Confringo! Hmm. Seems a pleasant enough little place. Revelio. If this is where Mary bred the spiders, they're not here now. Well, this isn't a good side. These spiders have gone somewhere. A ladder. Not sure I want to know where this leads. I'd best be ready for whatever I may find down there. Exact. I need to find and destroy all of these before the situation gets even worse. That's one exact destroyed. I should get the rest. You're a deadly grace. Confringo! I can't let you harm Ranger any more than you already have. Bombarda! Revelio! Bombarda! Defender! Rebellion. I hate to think that they see me, but I don't see them. Rebellion. Bombarda! Revelio! Glacius! Defense! God, the mission! I need to destroy all of the exiles. Glopendo! Potato! Stupid one! Glopendo! Stupid. 
Stück von. Bombarder. Krisis. Defender. Defender. Eight legs is simply too many. Revelio. Bombarder. That's the last of the spider sacks. I suppose I know what happened to Mary Portman now. She was breeding the spiders. Rebellion.
Sometimes it seems all roads lead to Hogsmeade. Mr. Dunn, I have some news. Thank Merlin. About my sweet friend Mary. So sorry, Mr. Dunn. She was an innocent victim. Poor Mary. Fighting for the Hamlet to the bitter end, no doubt. A noble sacrifice. She truly was a remarkable woman. Remarkable. She didn't deserve this. Few do. I am sorry about your friend. But you'll be relieved to know that I cleared out the spiders. It's safe to return now. You? You cleared out the spiders? I can't believe it, but I'm certainly relieved. I imagine the first order of business will be to help the Amulet rebuild. I suppose I have nothing to fear from dead spiders. That's the spirit. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you again for all you've done. I shall keep you apprised of the Hamlet's rebuilding. Glad I could be of help, and I look forward to visiting your shop the next time I'm in Aronshire. To dearly departed Mary. I shall sort something out. Hello? Is something the matter? Most decidedly, yes. My precious moon calf, Biscuit, was abducted by poachers up north. Oh, the vicious brutes. I tried to fight back, but I was no match for them. I'm sorry about your moon calf, Mr... Garnuff. Just Garnuff. I'm only one goblin. Not a particularly brave one at that. I have no chance against a pack of bloodthirsty poachers. Oh, my poor Biscuit. I can only hope she's able to escape. Why do you suppose the poachers took Biscuit? I have no idea. Mooncalf dung's highly valuable for fertilising magical plants. But I cannot imagine poachers care much about gardening. Who knows what they'll do to her? She could be flog-skinned, gutted and stuffed. I assume... Oh, Biscuit. A moon calf is an unusual pet. Why did you choose Biscuit? She followed me one evening. I wouldn't leave my side. Never thought I was one for a pet of any kind. But now I can't imagine life without her. Moon calves are often thought of as silly, simple-minded creatures. But I've seen great depth of character in Biscuit. I wouldn't trade her for a hippogriff or a hippopotamus. Or even a goose that lays golden eggs. I'll keep an eye out for your moon calf, Garnif. Oh, how kind. If only all of Wizardkind was as gracious to goblins. If you do see her and can bring her safely home to me, I promise to reward you for your efforts. Do keep an eye out for her, and be careful out there. Poachers! Garnif was right then. I'd better be careful. Stop 
Around here can sleep Revelio. Repairer. Alohomora. Which one of you is Biscuit? <laughs> Revelio! Revelio. Let's get you back to God, shall we? Revelio.
Betting on the dragon fight was the best decision I've made yet. Hogs meet, here I come. Garnef, I've rescued Biscuit. You have? Oh, is she hurt? Was she frightened? Are you all right? Biscuit is fine, as am I. I was able to rescue her without much incident. Oh, mercy. Where poachers are concerned, I tend to expect the worst. I cannot wait to get her home. I so miss seeing her dance in the evenings. Such joy. I'm glad she's safe now. I'm sure she'll be happy to go home. Oh, that is a great weight off my mind. Oh, my sweet little biscuit. My wise, noble moon calf. And here is your reward, of course. Well deserved. As I said before, you have restored my faith in wizard kind. You've restored at least a modicum of my faith in wizard kind. Oh, biscuit and I can't thank you enough. Do you let me know if I can be of any assistance at all? I hope to see you again. Farewell for now. <laughs>